So When You Gonna is the latest album from Dreamwife, and I'm very happy to have Bella and Raquel join us from the band. Hello. Thank you so much for doing this. Hello. So how's the choir been for you guys? I, I know everybody's been talking about it, but I love checking in directly. I don't want to hear it from the media. I want to talk to actual people that are dealing with it. So nice to see that you two are in two different countries. So what has the individual experiences been like for you guys? I mean, it, this year has definitely not worked out how anyone thought it was going to. Um, and it's been a lot of kind of adapting and figuring out new ways to go about doing things. Like um, as a band, the kind of core of what we do is really always been kind of centered in the live show. So not having that kind of like physical coming together of people in space is like a huge thing. Um, but also, I think it's been really good for me in terms of like grounding that like we spent so much time on tour that um, I'm really grateful to just be in one place and to kind of like lay some roots and to kind of, yeah, I, I feel quite solid in myself in a way that like when you're playing shows all the time, you're giving so much energy to other people and I love it, but it's good to be able to, or like I, I feel like I benefited from being able to step back from that. Even sort of uh, thinking about your identity and identity as a band, so much of what we've done since we started started this band has been so focused on the live show and the energy, uh, preserving energy to be able to give it all um, on stage. And, and also a lot of our music is based around that kind of raw energy that's created at shows and at festivals and sort of that beautiful, uh, yeah, that beautiful circus you join on the road with your tour family and the people you meet that you get inspired by. So to be able to release an album when you can't tour, but for it to be received well and for you to also be quite um, happy with with having released it, um, I think it really helps at least me to understand that we're not solely a live fan that there are many facets and layers behind our music and yeah it's sort of a wake-up call of of your own identity mm, and i think it's like realizing how how important music is kind of even outside of the live sphere you know like i have relied so heavily on like a kind of a fairly small number of albums to like get me through this time and you know when stuff first started happening there was talk about whether we were going to push the album whether it'd be better to release at a time where we can like tour it out but pe people need music more than ever during hard times and confusing times um humans really need to be seen by other humans and i think the rock show kind of as a environment allows for this like witnessing both of like us as performers and of the audience you know you get to be there and like feel something together in a space um, and I think that is really, really profound. And I think I want to really respect that in a way that I think I was quite afraid of people. I'm, I'm quite afraid of people. But people are scary. Are people safe? I don't know. Sometimes they're safe, sometimes they're not. Like, you can ask that question a million different ways. Now, I want to touch on the album for a second. Of course, congrats on the release. So many people are digging it. You got sports, hasta la vista, so many great songs on there. But one in particular that is a standout is Homesick, which is an anthem of sexual empowerment for women. And it's a topic at the forefront right now because of WAP by Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion. Yeah. And people are all up in arms about it, so graphic, this and that. So you know, what are your thoughts are on that? And, and what is the history of Homesick? I only listened to that song for the first time today and I was like, holy <laughs> this is amazing. But I w I'm aware that there's some controversies around it, but I've not, I don't know the lyrics, but I'm also like, forever we have had young girls listening to like deeply sexist, sexualized rap music, right? Like, and, and you know, it is across the board in lots of music, but like some rap, rap music is like particularly, um, does that. Whereas like, like you, it's like literally women just talking about how they want to use their bodies and what they want to do with their bodies. And, and that's just really great. If they want to do some dirty ass, they want to get tied up. They want to get absolutely pounded. Like, 
good for them good for them to be able to like articulate that desire because i think like women really get their desires taken away from them and um just yeah yeah it's the whole like objectification of women thing and is is really cool to switch that on its head so hard that it makes people feel uncomfortable i would say in some ways homesick has been five years in the writing but that's mostly because it, i've kind of reappropriated a really early baseline for it but also i think we started writing it again a few years ago and it, there were kind of bits to it and it was like yeah yeah and then the kind of manifestation that has ended up on the album was a kind of collage of lots of different kind of moments it's very kind of cut and paste um chaos sexy chaos rough and sexy these are some words that <laughs> <laughs> but it's pretty cool the first baseline that felt like the first song we wrote is a baseline that bella wrote is is used in this song. Mm -mm -mm. That was, yes, that was really beautiful to do that because it's such a it's such a good baseline. So it sort of felt it needed another life. Yeah, we touched upon how difficult it is for artists to really just be grounded right now, and you guys being so dependent on live shows, you're you're pretty much an independent band, right? You're not signed to some huge record label or anything like that. So. What are you guys doing in terms of sustaining yourselves and what is the plan for Dream Life? <laughs> just, just figuring it out. Um, we've, got, we've got a few things in the pipeline that we're very excited about. Um, and, you know, kind of figuring out like kind of little live, like ways of doing live performances, even though we're all in different places. Like we've had some fun with some um, kind of virtual shows. Um, and like regardless of not actually doing the gigs, it, it has felt very busy and we've had quite a lot of work to do a lot of the time. Um, but I, th I think we're kind of gearing up to start writing again now, you know, it's like, I think, there's some kind of energy building for uh, sharing sharing song ideas and stuff. And it's going to be interesting, like navigating that in different places, but we've done a fair bit of kind of <clears throat> setting stuff back and forth. Also with the live show, um, not being mm -hmm. able to be a part of a, of a campaign again, what kind of an album campaign, I think we're still in a really great position to be uh, able to write and to be able to create. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of the members of our tour team are waiting. Because for artists, you can, you can still produce another record or you can start on a different creative project. But for the crew, um, I think that is such, when there's such a big question mark of when live shows will start again. I think, uh, that's, I think that's quite difficult. But I feel really great to be in a position that we can write together and 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 we can create more. 